Father to child, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. And with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Father to child, from your spirit to my spirit, I'm lighted by your word. And with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Say, Father to child. Father to child. Spirit to spirit. Lighted by your word. And with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Father to child, father to child, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. And with your breath of life, and with your breath of life. That's how I change my world. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name. 
your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Oh, breathe, Lord. Breathe. We need you to breathe. Breathe. We're asking you to breathe. Breathe. You change us when you breathe. Breathe. You make us when you breathe. Breathe. Oh, oh. Breathe. Breathe. Breathe, Lord. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name, breathe, Lord. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name, breathe. Yahweh, Yahweh is your name, breathe. Everything you change. When we allow God to breathe into us, His breath gives life. Without His breath, we would not be here. God, I ask you for the breath of life to breathe in us, God, today. Like you did on the day of Pentecost, God, breathe. Holy Spirit, breathe. Breathe, Jesus. We need your breath. We won't live without you, Jesus. Thank you. Father, breathe on us. Breathe on us. Breathe your life. Zoe life. On us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We thank you. For the life of God. In us. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shall breathe. Come on, somebody shall breathe. Breathe your essence. Breathe your life. Breathe. God, breathe everything you to happen. Things begin to happen. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, all of gladness. That was powerful. Thank you. I love that song. Breathe. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I greet you all in Jesus' name. For those that are here for the first time.
Amen. Amen. That's a manifestation of bleeding. Amen. Well, I greet you all, those that are here for the first time. Also, our members, our faithful members, committed workers in the house of God. I greet you in Jesus' name. Uh, today, I want to start a new series. It's going to go on for a couple of weeks. Um, but today will be introduction. I will try to be brief today. Then next week, we're going to begin to teach and preach. Amen? And the topic is the power of a dedicated life. The power of a dedicated life. Today, I'm going to use the book of Nehemiah. I'm going to use Nehemiah as a case study of obedience to serve the purpose of God. I really like the story of Nehemiah. Anybody read that book, the book of Nehemiah? I really love that book and what it did. So today I'm going to use the book of Nehemiah and I'm going to also give you an assignment. I will use verse 1, verse 4, but I want you to read everything during the week. During the week, if you have a purpose in God, and also, you have a project that you are working on. Please read it. I will touch some of it today, but I can't touch the whole book of Jeremiah. Amen? So, we're going to go to Nehemiah chapter 1. We're going to use it as a case study in obedience to serve the purpose of God. Dedication is full commitment. To a cause, no matter what happens. In other words, no matter what happens, you will continue to do what you are called to do. No matter what. So dedication is full of commitment, not partial commitment. To the cause, no matter what happens. Nothing will stop you to do what you are called to do. Or whatever assignment or project God has given you to do. For yourself, for the church, or for your family. It is to continue without losing hope. Dedication. Let's go to the book of Nehemiah chapter 1. He said, the word of Nehemiah, the son of Ashaliah. It came to pass in the month of Shivli, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, that Anani, one of the brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who are escaped, who have survived the captivity. Concern Jerusalem. Remember, Nehemiah was not in Jerusalem. He was not. He was in Shushan. So they came to him with the news. But the news was not a favorable news. The news was not a good news. So what they told him that the wall of Jerusalem is also broken down. They took, they've taken the children of Israel, some of them, they put them in captivity. Not only that, the war of Jerusalem was to protect them from the enemy coming in. But the enemy invaded Jerusalem. They took some people. Not only that, they knocked down the wall. They knock it down. 
So the children of Israel are exposed to the enemy. I don't know, some of us also go into situation that at one point things was going good. Things was fine. But the enemy came in. The enemy came in. It's not too late. You can rebuild. You can rebuild. That's why this example, this case study Jeremiah will be using is very good. So they told him that the wall of Jerusalem is what? Has been collapsed. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down and its gates were born with fire. So it was when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. I was fasting and praying. Can I stop there for a few minutes? Before you start any project, it must start on your knee. The reason for failure is that we didn't consult God, we didn't get God involved in what we are doing. I love what the, uh, the Nehemiah did. The first thing he did, he wept and he cried. It's okay to cry. And it's okay to weep. But at one point, you got to stop. He wept. He cried. Then he began to fast. And he began to pray. Why is he fasting? Why is he praying? He needs an answer from God. He wants to be led by the Spirit. Should I take this project? Should I go back and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem? Last Friday, I talked about lack of discernment. That one of the reasons that we go through financial problem or financial bondage is because we have too much responsibility. Too much responsibility. If we have some things that we're not supposed to be doing, it's not our assignment. Too much responsibility will take your time and will take your money. But it, Nehemiah was a man of God. He didn't just take that responsibility. He started on his knees. He was praying. He was seeking God to get the leading of the Holy Spirit. Should I go and rebuild the wall? Should I go and help my people? Some people are working for God, but they're not working with God. Nehemiah wanted to work with God because he realized in every project, in every assignment, it will be challenging. Especially if you are doing it for God. It will be challenging and the enemy will challenge you, will attack you, will try to stop you, will threaten you, fight against you. Oh, that's why we have to be dedicated whatever we are doing. We must have the mindset, I'm not going to quit no matter what. No matter what I see. No matter what is going on. Even if you mock me, I will stop. Actually, mocking will provoke me to work harder. Hey! <laughs> It provokes me. Amen. So he wept and mourned for many days. I said to myself, at one point, you got to get up. I like the song today, get up, get up from the grave. Amen. You have life in you. What are you doing in the grave? <laughs> you don't belong in the, in the grave. You are among the living. <laughs> Can I pray that for a few minutes? Uh, get up from the grave. Uh, you are among the living. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not over. Get up and start again. I love that. They're, preaching my, they're singing my message. <laughs> Tell them what I'm teaching. You know, get up. 
Some of us have to get up. It's not over. Failure, because you fail, is not the end. We fail in the little things so we can be successful in the bigger thing. It's better to fail on your way up than to fail on your... Come on, somebody talk to me now. Amen. Get up from failure. This was failure. The wall of Jerusalem collapsed. They invaded Jerusalem and took the people. And Nehemiah wept and mourned for many days. He said, I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. And I said, I pray, Lord, God of heaven, O great and awesome God, who keep his covenant and mercy with those who love and observe your covenant. Please let your ears be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant which I pray to you day and night. He was fasting. He was praying day and night for the children of Israel. He needs the leading of the Holy Spirit. He was not moved by emotion. He wanted to be led by the Spirit of God. I remember Romans 8, 14. He said, as, men, as many that are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. In every assignment, we have to be led. Don't be led by your emotion. Amen. Don't, be, don't do according to what you feel. We are not led by feelings. We are led by, by the spirit of the living God. Every project, every assignment, we must start on our knee. We must pray to get the leading of the Holy Spirit. When we pray and we fast, what we are doing, we are engaging God to be with us. We are engaging God to work for us. We are engaging God to help us. In Psalm 121, David said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where cometh my help? In every assignment, you're going to need divine help. In every purpose of your life, you're going to need divine assignment, uh, uh, help from God. David realized that. We have to realize that before we start. Amen. Amen. A dedicated life, have relationship with God. A dedicated life, know the strength of God. A dedicated life, have, know the power of God. Are you sharing me? So Nehemiah was praying to God. He needed the leading. He was not sure if he should go and begin to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. So he began to pray. He said, your servant, I confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. It started with forgiveness of sin. Amen. Do you know why? Because forgiveness of sin removes legal right of the enemy. It removes what? The legal right of the enemy. The reason why they, uh, the enemy invaded Jerusalem and collapsed the war. Do you know why? Come on, talk to me, church. You can talk. Why? That's a reason. The enemy don't just come for a re no reason. They did something wrong. They gave the enemy legal right to come in. They sinned against the precept and the principle of God. That's why the enemy came in. So Nehemiah realized that. He said, before I can start the project, we have to take away legal right from the enemy. 
And the way to do it is to start with what? Forgiveness of sin. Are you still with me? We are going somewhere. Today's introduction, are you here? He said, both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept your commandment. The status, nor the ordinances which you commanded. He said, your servant Moses, remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nation. I'm going somewhere with that. If you are unfaithful, I will what? Scatter you among the nation. So because what I did, the enemy came in. That's why they were scattered. That's why they were scattered. Because they became what? Unfaithful. Then look at Nehemiah 1, 9. He said, but if you return to me and keep my discernment, my commandment, and do them, though some of you were cast away to the farthest part of the heaven, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Why? Listen to me, church. You got to get this. Why? It's prayer, you know. This is prayer. What he's doing is trying to get the world a discernment. He needs directions. He wants to know, should I go or should I stay? He wants to know, is this my assignment or not? Is this your will or not? You know what he did? He didn't go to a prophet. He didn't go to a prophet. Yeah, it's okay, you can go to a prophet. But what he's doing is using what we call the Logos word. He's talking about the written word of God. That's why it's so important to know the will of God. That's why it's so important to know the Bible. So he's telling God in prayer. He said, he said, if they sin, if they don't follow your precept and your principle, I will scatter them. But if they repent and come back to me, you will gather them. Based on that, Nehemiah decided to go and build the wall. Sometimes, we don't need to go to a prophetic conference to know the will of God. Sometimes we are waiting for a prophetic conference or for a prophet to tell you the will of God. The will of God is written in the word of God. That's what we need. He didn't go to a prophet. He didn't go and consult a prophet. He read the word of God. He knew the word of God. Based on the word of God, he made decision to go and build the world. Can you use the word of God to make your decision? Or do you always need a rhema word? Rhema word don't come all the time. Amen. The word should be in your belly. You should know the word of God. Use the word of God to make decision for your life. That's what Nehemiah did. And he made decision. I don't have time to go over everything. The next thing he did. After he finished praying. He went to the king. On his way to the king. Remember, he was in captivity. And Nehemiah was a cup bearer to the king. Are you hearing me? He didn't even ask the king. I want you to read this scripture. Chapter 2, chapter 3. I can cover everything. Because 
of the prayer that he has prayed. That's what happened. During the time of praying, after he finished praying, he went to the king. Because there's no way you can be a cup bearer and the king don't see you. <laughs> He's the one that served the king with water or drinks. So one day, he was going to serve the king. Remember, he was praying for the leading of the Holy Spirit. God that will serve is a God that will bring confirmation and bring affirmation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He has prayed. The king looked at him and the king said, is anything, everything okay with you? He didn't even ask the king for permission. The king knew that something is wrong. Amen? And I don't believe because he did this. You know, sometimes we want people to know something is wrong. He didn't do that. Because, because of the prayer that he has been praying. The Bible makes us understand. In Proverbs 21.1. <laughs> that the thing's heart is in the hands of the Lord. It's like rivers of water. The Lord turned it. Whichever ways he wants to turn it to. I truly believe because of his prayer, because of his fasting, because the heart of the king belongs to God, God touched his heart and turned it to Nehemiah. Now sometimes you can hide that something's happening and they don't even see you. They don't even look in your face. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The king asked him. And he said, because of Jerusalem, the war is done. And I would like to go. Let's spend time. This is introduction to read this. The king gave him permission. Not only that, the king gave him resources. <laughs> Everything that he needs to go. Even the king sent people to go with him. I only said, oh God, we thank you. For every vision, there's always a provision. He didn't even ask for the provision. The king gave it to him. If you are silent, God will confirm it. I hear them saying, oh God, we thank you. So God gave him permission to go. We are teaching about the power of dedication. Let's go also to Jeremiah 4. No, Nehemiah, sorry. Not Jeremiah. Nehemiah 4. 1. I want to spend time because I'm going to be on this teaching for a few weeks. So read chapter 2 and chapter 3. Some of you that are doing any project or any assignment for God, if you're working on a project, this is took you need to read and God help them. And what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah was a good leader. Amen? Nehemiah didn't just pack his stuff and go. He got the permission from the king. The king released him. Even when you get to Jeremiah, please, I mean Nehemiah, when you get to Jerusalem, please read 2 and 3. The way he did it, the way we conduct business, investment, or, 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 or pro, project, you don't do it alone, you cannot do it alone, you, have, you need people to go with you. Even a leader is not supposed to do anything, everything. Amen? Sometimes you see people around you that are smarter than you. It doesn't mean you should, should, should be jealous about them. God has sent them to help you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please read chapter 2 and 3. There's some people God put beside you, even if they know more than you. 
hallelujah, is to use what they have for the glory of God, for your assignment. I told my leaders when we first started, that's why we have a lot of leaders here in this church. We have a leader that trained for a mega church. I told them, I am not called to do everything. I know my assignment. I'm going to do my assignment. You are here not to be a spectator. You are here to help. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are here to help. A leader has to delegate. Amen. You are not called to do everything. Amen. Are you hearing me? In the beginning, I did everything because I was waiting and to discern and to see faithful people. If you put anyone that's not faithful on your assignment, it's coming back to you. You're going to end up doing it yourself. So Nehemiah also went to Jerusalem. He's a great leader. Please read it. He gathered all the leaders. And he met all the leaders. And talked to them. He was not bossy. He was very humble. Because he knew them as well. Gather them. He spoke to them. Let's go to chapter 4. Nehemiah. Then they started building. That's my focus. And I will stop. Next week, we will continue. Nehemiah 4. The power of dedicated life. So, chapter 4, verse 1, they begin to what? To build. He followed all the process that is needed. Amen? He didn't go to Jerusalem and say, well, I don't need you. I can do it by myself. Listen to me, you cannot do it by yourself. God's purpose is divine purpose. God's purpose is too big for one man to do it. Moses did not understand that until his father in law, Jethro, remember? Jethro was a businessman. Until Jethro went to him. And saw the, what he was doing. There were thousands of people waiting for him to judge. Meanwhile, he left his wife and children with Jethro. Hello? So the father brought the wife and the children. And then I was, I'm not your babysitter. <laughs> I'm not outside to keep your wife and your children. Because God gives you assignment, you are responsible to take care of your family. Actually, it's your home, it's your home that qualifies you as a God's leader. If you cannot take care of your home, you cannot take care of God's people. Because we are many and we have a lot of issues. We got a lot of issues. Because we are human. Oh, anybody here have no problem? You are perfect. If you are perfect, you don't need to be here. You need to be with Jesus up there. <laughs> you need to be up there with Jesus. We are people that have many problems. We have many issues. We have financial problems. We have attitude problems. We have some things that need to be dealt with. So if you cannot take care of a family of two or three, how dare you want to take care of us? <laughs> Me alone, I have five or more. Everybody have problems. Is your home that qualify you for what? For your ministry, for your purpose. If they are not come take care of your family, you are not qualified. It's okay. Don't be upset, but that's the truth. Speak the truth and put the devil to shame. Are you hearing me? Moses was doing the work by himself. Go and read Exodus, so I believe 15. Go and read it. You will see what I'm talking about. Even if God gives you assignment, you are not called to do it alone by yourself. Amen. Amen. Too much responsibility. What you are doing, did God tell you to do it. And I know you have good heart. You want to help everybody. It's good. Help every 
body. Why don't you teach them to help themselves? You teach them to help themselves. Hello? Hi! Teach them. That's what Jethro told Moses. Why are you alone doing all the things? You know what he said? He said, you and them. You burn yourself out. You finish yourself. They too will wait in the sun. Maybe outside for one man. And he left his wife. Then he left his son. Amen. Working for God. But not working. We have to work with. I loved Nehemiah. Please read that word. I loved Nehemiah. He started with God. He cried. It's okay. He cried for days. It's okay. But at one point, you got to stop. And get up. Get up. I love that. Get up. Maybe the next time I will come, I will tell them, get up. Get up from the grave. You don't belong in the grave. You are among the living. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I like the second song. Breathe on me. I will ask God to breathe on you in the grave. You don't know what you are singing. You are Feed on them in the grave. When you breathe on you, you will come alive. Hallelujah. Come alive. Glory to God. What are you doing in the grave? It's not over yet. Because you fail, that doesn't mean you stay in the grave. I love another song that I like. We fall down. <laughs> we what? We fall down. But we get up. I like the book, but we get up. <laughs> you get up, get up from there and start again. And that's what happened here. The wall of Jerusalem broken down. The gates are bound. They are not exposed to the enemy. Some of them are in there. And I love Jeremiah. He didn't overlook it. Hello? He didn't overlook and say, well, it's not my assignment. God sent somebody else. He put on himself. He wanted to go, but he prayed first. And he made decision based on logos. Wow. Please pay attention to this. He made decision based on what? The Bible. It's in the Bible. I can show you the scripture. I mean, he quoted it actually. Logos word. You don't have to always lead, li listen or waiting for prophetic word or to hear the voice of the Lord. Sean, get up. When you fall, you know you're supposed to get up and try again and try again and correct your mistake. Amen? God, honestly, sometimes God allow us to fail. He didn't make us fail, but he allowed us to fail, to teach us, to humble us, to correct our mistakes, to change our attitudes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He allows it. Amen. In the little stuff, in the beginning, it's like someone climbing a ladder, 50 step ladder. When you get to five, you fell. You can go back and climb again, right? But when you get to 45 and you fall, I don't think you'll be able to get up. I don't think you'll be able to get up. We have to really pray and ask God, please, Lord, breathe. Breathe, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let me finish. Let me get here. He started the work, but I want you to read all of chapter 1 Chapter 2, chapter 3, to what? To see the process. The process work. There's a message I taught you years ago. The law of the process. The law of what? Of the process. A lot of people don't like process. They like shortcut. <laughs> Amen? Short what? Short cut. Anytime you do short 
stop. You don't go back to the beginning. No short cut. Follow the process. The law of process. Process works. I hear what I'm saying. It works. And actually, that's why I want you to focus on the process. That is true. And it started. It was not hasty. It was not hasty. It followed the proper process. Every project, every assignment, you have to start on your knee. And anyone that kneel before God will stand before any man. That's the principle. If I kneel before God, I will stand before anyone. Before any man. Amen. Because I have submitted myself to the creator. The power of a dedicated life. Let's go to chapter 4. Verse 1. I'll do this. Unless you have time. Verse 1. But it happened. When the Sabbath. Heard that we were rebuilding the wall. That he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jew. The enemy was talking and saying that they cannot build the wall. That if they try to build it, they're not going to make it. Amen. They were mocking them. But the Jew began to walk to build the wall. Amen. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria, that's the enemy, and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? They call them feeble, weak. You can't do it. You are very weak. But they continue to build. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what are these people Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete in a day? Will they revive the stone from the heap of the rubbish? Stone that are born. Can I explain for a few minutes? The enemy was so sure the Sabala and these other neighboring people that knocked down the wall, that they cannot do the wall. That they cannot do it. But Nehemiah gathered the people and they begin to build the wall. They begin to do what God has told Nehemiah to do. So the enemy were talking to some of the Jews that are closer to the enemy, that are listening to the enemy. One of the things, we need to be careful when you are doing assignment, don't talk to someone that don't have the faith level that you have about the assignment. Don't do it. But the problem, they, they didn't have problem. We're going to get somewhere. They didn't have problem. They have some of the Jews that live closer to the enemy. And the enemy was talking to them. Was talking to those Jews. Look at them. Can they build it? They're trying to build it. They're very weak. They were listening. Why do you listen to the enemy? You need somebody with the same faith level or higher than your faith. You need somebody that has done it before. You need someone that believes in God. You need someone that believes in the power of miracle. You need someone that believes that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you think. Don't talk to somebody that's discouraging you. Your level of dedication will drop. And they were listening. And those who too, they will take it and they will go to the camp and they will deliver it to them. They were listening. Listen to this. What, what 
listen to what the enemy was saying. What are these feeble Jewish do, doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifice? Will they complete in a day? Will they want revive? Say, revive what? Say that again. Say that again. Sometimes, people from the outside see better than people with the inside. Watch this. The enemy actually saw the obstacles. The enemy saw the problem. Even though Nehemiah Follow a lot of process. He missed one thing. One thing. How can you build on rubbish? How can you build on rubbish? How do you build? Come on, talk to me, church. You can talk. Where the spirit of the Lord is. How do you build? He followed all the process, but in the building stage, what did he do? Probably they were in A's, they didn't remove the rubbish. You know what's a rubbish? It's a British word, rubbish, garbage. And as they gather from the previous war, it collapsed. And it collapsed, and it was still on the ground. Before you build, the first thing you do, what do you do? Come on, tell your neighbor, what do you do? Come on, what do you do? What do you do? You cannot build on rubbish. The first thing you do is to do what? Rubbish. Even the enemy was saying, you can build. We see the problem. There was so much rubbish, you cannot build. Rubbish. I may want to rebuild their life. How many have business and business law lost business was it going? I want to build again. How many were married before, but you want to marry again? I'm going there. Amen. How many experience failure in business? Amen. The problem is we are so hasty to quick and go be married. We are so hasty to quick and go and start a new business. The previous business, we haven't resolved the issue. There's so much issue on the ground that needs to be removed. So much rubbish. So much issue. Because if you don't clear the rubbish and you try to build, you're going to have problems. You're going to have four F's. Failure. Fear, fatigue, frustration. Fear, failure, fatigue, frustration. How will fatigue happen? They were building on rubbish. If you try to build, you fall. Because the foundation the first thing you do is clear the foundation. You know what the Bible says? David said, if the foundation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? What can the righteous do? They should have what? Clear the rubbish. If you come to me to counsel you, I will ask you, how come the previous business failed? Is it mismanagement? I know everybody blaming on COVID. It's COVID. You say, no, pastor, it's COVID. People came, everything just, you know. You know, what we learn in business, when we do a business plan, you must have an exit route. 
if you don't walk out, how do I get out? But one thing, and that's what take us to the topic, a dedicated life. The power of dedication. Even though things were not looking good, Nehemiah was still ready and continued to build. Let me show you this, although my time is up. I get a short time today, minus five. Oh, God. Robbie Stone, I bond now to Tobiah and Amorite, was beside him. And he said, whatever they build, if a fox go upon it, it will what? It will break down their stone wall. Because the problem is still there. How can you build when the problem is there? Frustration. You'll be frustrated. It was the Bible said it. When you continue to read, the Bible said they have the strength to walk, but now the Bible said the strength of the laborer are weak. Why are they weak? They believe on the rubbish. Someone come to me and say, You are frustrated. I want to know the root. What caused the frustration? Amen. Even the enemy can see. See, whether they build, even if the force go upon it, it will break down the stone wall. Now they have problems. They started the work well. How many have started assignment well? But at the middle of completion, every hell broke loose. Every hell. Come on, let me see your hand. Have you explained that before? Everything was going well. Everything was smooth. Everything was okay. You were building. But when you get to the half of the assignment, every hell broke loose. I've explained that before. Every hell broke loose. When it happened, I, you know what I do? I don't blame nobody. I don't blame myself. I don't blame people that are helping me. You know what I do? I'm going to consult God. Every angel must come down. <laughs> Everyone must stand on my behalf and fight for me. Listen to this. Watch this. So now, the power of dedicated life. Number one, we will discuss that next week. Are we close there? Is focus. Focus. Regardless of what is happening. Regardless, the laborers were tired. Regardless of failure, of faith, of fear. Regardless, you continue to do what God has given you to do. You never stop. You never stop. A dedicated life never stop the assignment. Amen. As some people, they want to stop and pray. No, you walk and pray. Amen. Let me tell you, if you stop the work, and go, it's okay to pray. I pray too. But I always pray and do the work. I always walk and pray. I don't only pray and leave the work. Because Sabala, they were mocking you that you don't do the work. That provoked me. That means the work will never stop. God assignment never stop. God work never stop. Even during COVID, we were still preaching. We were having service. Virtual. Amen. People were being saved. People were being healed. We didn't allow COVID to stop us. It might stop us from coming to the building, but it cannot stop us from doing virtual. Even if we stop us on Facebook, we will do phone call. Dedicated life. You know what helped us during the COVID? We were prepared. We are dedicated. Before COVID, when it snow, we don't cancel service. I hate to cancel service. I don't like to cancel God's purpose. Remember, before COVID, when it snow, I said, snow, no matter what, cannot stop you. No matter what, you should not stop the assignment of God. No matter what is happening, 
Even if it's raining, we will have church. If it's snowing, we will have church. If it's hot, we will have church. In the name of Jesus, we will do prayer line. Who remember? Prayer line. I said, no, we are not canceled. They will come in. Oh, pastor, you're going to cancel service? I said, huh? We are not canceling. What do we do? Pray, speak now. Speak loud now. Prayer line. Everybody go on the prayer line. Snow can, it can only stop us from coming to church. It cannot stop us from speaking. Because we have life. We have Zoe life. The work of God should not stop. The work of God must continue. Whatever God has called you to do, you cannot stop. You have to continue. Regardless of what's happening. Some people stop. Yeah, they are talking about me. For me, if you talk, really, you provoke me. If you mock me, you provoke me. Because what I'm doing, I'm doing my father's business. If you try to stop me, you provoke me, I will even do more. If I pray three times a day, I will pray seven times a day. This, oh God. Dedicated life. Now they have issues. This is where I'm going. The next verse says, Here! Oh no! You know what the enemy did? As they see them building, they conspire. The enemy came to them. They begin to call other people to come against them. They begin to send fear. Let me tell you, don't allow spirit of fear to stop you what God has called you to do. The enemy used fear that you can't do it. That you are weak. Amen. Years ago, I went to school. Same school. That's what I did. And then fear came out. And I prayed that God will help me. Fear. When they said they will kill them, they will come and kill them. When they realized that they will not stop. Yes, they realized they will not stop. The enemy conspired, and then they told them, We are coming to kill you. Why? So that they can they can stop. But you will see here Nehemiah, even though there's a problem. What who did he turn to? He prayed. He started with God. He continued with God. In time of trouble, he went to God. Some of us, when we start, we don't engage God. We only engage God when there's trouble. He said, here, oh Lord, our God, we are despised. Turn up their reproach on their head. I like that kind of prayer. Tell you a testimony, give you a testimony. Years ago, we just started the ministry, and Pastor Marsh and I, we are praying. Every morning we pray and we pray and we pray. So one day a revelation came that the enemy is trying to stop us. Not to start. I think it's the ministry we're about to start. I said, not to start the ministry, the enemy. Was speaking. The devil speak a lot. Amen? But stop listening to him. He speaks a lot. And if he speaks to you, you don't say anything. You speak something else. And you speak something else. You know what's happening? If you don't counter him and speak back, you are receiving it. You are receiving it. And I refuse to receive from the enemy. So, Pastor Mancha gave the revelation that then want to start, want to do this, want to do this, want to do this. He talked, I want to do that, I want to do that. If you listen to him, you will believe it. Faith is the opposite of fear. And fear is the opposite of faith. So, he said that, ah, I begin to bind the devil. Bind you, I cast you out, what fear prayer? 
Then he spoke again. He said, look at that one. Who gave him the authority to bind me? Oh, Jesus. Why did he say that? I have a righteous oh. I'm serious. Ask him. I had a righteous anger. The first thing I told him, I said, you forgot that Jesus defeated you on Calvary. He shed his blood. And I know you are afraid of the blood of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you, Luke 10, 19. You see, if you don't see anything, you are sucking in it, you are receiving it. Hallelujah. When we read the word of God, we are inhaling the word of God. When the enemy comes, you have to exhale. You have to exhale. The word of God is not for you to just hold on to it. If you are pregnant with the word of God, when the enemy attacks you, speak the word. 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 And the world was, and the world, then he took me to Genesis. And the world said, Let there be. So what I did, I didn't stop. I began to preach the same message. They were looking at me, you're going to stop. I just stop. I preach. I preach. I preach. I can't see my nose, but I begin to preach. And I begin to preach. And I begin to preach. And I begin to preach. Hallelujah. Whenever I come, I spoke it. After I spoke, I preach. I teach. I just speak whatever come in my belly. I speak it to them. Guess what happened? Oh, darkness have no power. The light came back. The light came back. The Bible says the light, there was light and darkness cannot comprehend. Thou God of heaven cannot comprehend. There was light. I said, let there be light. Guess what? When light came, hallelujah, I went to another dimension. And I began to pray. And I began to preach. I'm telling you about the power of a dedicated life. Whatever God has called you to do, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't pray and stop. You pray and walk. You walk and pray and continue. Oh God, somebody say yes. Come on, say yes. Come on, somebody say yes. Come on, somebody say yes. Come on, somebody say yes. You can't stop. You can't give up. It could be for your family. You can't stop. Keep on trying. Keep on praying. Keep on trying. Keep on trusting God. You cannot stop. Say, I will not stop. I will not stop. I will not stop. Yeah. 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 I can't stop. I can't afford to stop. I must continue. Oh, God. Oh, God. I can't 
can't stop. You can't stop. Assignment for your family, you cannot stop. Assignment for God, you cannot stop. Your project, you cannot stop. Don't allow fear. Don't allow failure. Don't allow frustration. You're going to finish it. What you have started, you have to finish it. If you continue, you will finish. But if you stop, you will not finish. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah. I must finish. I must finish. You must continue. The power of dedicated life. You cannot stop what God has given you to do. You cannot stop your assignment. It doesn't matter what is going on. It doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter what you are hearing. Begin to pray and begin to work. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Guess what? Because the Bible says that we are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. Nothing can stop you unless you stop yourself. That's the power of dedicated life. Don't listen to negativity. Focus on the assignment. Focus on what you are called to do. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Power of dedication. There's a power of focus. It doesn't matter what you are saying. I'm focusing. If you are talking about me, it's all good. I'm, I don't even hear it. Maybe they're talking, but I can't hear it. Are a liar, Jesus defeated you on the cross. Even the key of death is not in your hand. Listen to me. The greatest fear is what? Death. So Jesus conquered death. If greatest fear cannot have dominion over me, any other fear, any other fear cannot have dominion over me. Because the key of Eddie, the key of hell, Jesus took it uh, and he gave it to the church. Uh, are you hearing me? I told him, you cannot have dominion. Man, I went on and I went on and I went on and I went on. At one point, my wife was looking at me, when are you going to stop? I decided I am not going to stop until I fall out and fall asleep because I know if you don't Speak back, it will come again. Since then, you never ask me that again. No. <laughs> Somebody say, Yeah, Jesus. Jesus, give us the authority. You are unstoppable. You are unshakable. Continue to do the work of the Lord. Continue to serve God. Continue to do what you are called to do for the church of Jesus Christ. What you are called to do for your family. The assignment that God. I've given you, you will continue. Somebody say yes. 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 Someone this yes. Yeah. Someone this yes. Yeah. I am unstoppable. You are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. Hallelujah. Let's reward. Let's reward. Continue. Continue. They can't stop you. Every rubbish be clear. Oh God. Every rubbish be clear. In the name of Jesus. 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 Somebody say, yeah. Say, I am unstoppable. I will not stop. I have to continue. My assignment. Fear cannot stop me. Fear cannot stop me. Failure cannot stop me. Frustration cannot stop me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Fatigue. Fatigue cannot stop me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 The devil.
devil is a liar. You are victorious in Christ Jesus. I say you are victorious in Christ Jesus. Somebody say, yeah, yeah. I am victorious. You are victorious in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. You are victorious. 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 In Christ Jesus. You are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. Because greater, 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 greater is he that inside of me that he is the world. I'm marching on. I am marching on. I am moving forward. Step back one never. Back one never. Forward ever. I'm moving forward. I'm marching on. I am unstoppable. I am unshakable. Hallelujah. 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 To the Lamb of God. Yeah. 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 The devil is a liar. And the devil is a liar. Watch this. I said this. Once you have started, you will finish it. Once you have started, you will finish it. Don't stop. Keep on moving. Keep on praying. Walk. Try out to go. You know what Nehemiah said? Continue to You know what Nehemiah said? He knew that the enemy don't want them to build. Who did he turn to? The life power of the enemy. He turned back to God. Mind you, he started with he started with he continued with when there's problem what you have started you will finish if you don't stop. It might be difficult. It might be, there will be challenges. Challenges, I will continue. Failure, I will continue. Fear, I will continue. Frustration, I must continue. It's not where it's a must. You must continue what you have started. That's why I like the song today. Get up. All those projects that you buried, go get them up. Get them up. Because God is about to preach on you. And will affect what you are called to do. Come on, lift up your hands to heaven. Let us begin to thank God. Let's begin to bless God. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Thank you, Father, for this teaching. The power of dedicated life to continue what we are called to do. Here in ministry, at the church, our personal assignment that is given from God. Even our family assignment that we are supposed to do it. We will continue in the name of Jesus Christ. Even though they might say there's inflation, but our God will provide. Because for every vision, there's a provision. There's a provision that I've said for the assignment. If you continue, you will receive it. But you will stop, you will not receive it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, I will continue. No matter what, I will continue. I will continue to move forward. I will continue to serve God. I will continue to do my assignment. Even here at the church, at home, my business assignment that God has given to me, I must continue. I cannot stop. I will not stop. I will not stop. Because divine help is coming. Divine help has come. Divine help has come. So Father, I thank you. So Father, I bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Somebody shout! Say this, I am determined to continue. I will finish what I have started. I am unstoppable. Tell somebody, I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. I am unstoppable. Nothing can stop me. Greater
I need to be declaring it every day that your help has come. Declare it, declare it. Because the Lord said what you're doing, glory to God, you literally, as he has released some things, and it's in the spiritual realm, but as you speak it, my God, you are forcing it. My God, you're drawing it from the spiritual realm into the natural. Your help, my help has come. Glory to God. God, your help will come. Your help position, remember that teaching, faith faith is in the now don't position your faith into future, if you say will, that means you position it so reposition, my help has come come on, tell seven people tell seven people, my help has come my help has come, my help has come 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 my help has come. My help has come. My help has come. My help is here. My help has come. Oh, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Help has come. 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 Yata, 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 yata. Oh God, what happened? Yata, yata, my help has come. Say, my help has come. My help has come. My help has come. My help is here. My help has come. My help has come. Ah, yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one. They were in tune for the spirit. manifest in the name of Jesus. Because when it's established, it must manifest. So declare this. Unexpected, expected, financial miracle, financial breakthrough, come to me now. In the name of Jesus. Come to me now. In the name of Jesus. I am expectant. I am expectant. It's coming now. It's on my way now. He's coming to my house now. Yesterday. He's coming to me now. Yesterday. He's knocking at the door. Yesterday. He's knocking at my door. Yes. He's, yes. he's knocking at my door. Yes. Open the door. Yes. He's coming. Yes. He's knocking. 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 Yes. You better open yes. the door. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, amen, somebody. Glory to God. However, God choose to bring it. He may bring it, glory to God, in a raise. He may bring it in a new position. He may bring it in a debt cancellation. He may bring it, however, I just heard the word inheritance. I just heard the word in her. He may bring it in an inheritance. However, he choose to bring it. It's not your business to try to figure it out. It's your business just to receive it. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. I'll give me all the testimony. Was it about 22 years? This woman didn't know that a major inheritance. They said they couldn't find her. All these years they could not find her. 
glory to God. And she, she we had a, a, a um a service, and she flew up from California, and she came. She said, well, she went to church, but in her church, they didn't see it and all that kind of stuff. But she said, I just felt like I needed to give a special offering. When she went back, she said her great grand aunt or somebody said that got a letter for you. And then, and, and she got a, we don't understand. But anyway, there was a letter also at her house. Finally, after all 21 years, her inheritance got to her about $150,000. Amen, somebody. However, God choose to bring it. However, God choose to bring it. Amen, somebody glory to God there was another woman again with a bank account that she closed out and she said Pastor Marshall I know that I know that I took everything out that bank she said all of a sudden they called and said this money just been sitting here all these years uh, what do you want you know what do you want to do with it and she says what money she said my name is so and so amen and she said um, they said um, no but you have money here so she said she called back and she said and how much is it that I have because she says I emptied everything out why am I going to stop working for a company glory to God and left my, leave my money there so she said she said she said so how much money did I have there I forgot how much thousand it was it was Janice anyway some of y'all remember Janice amen glory to God and lo and behold she went there made the arrangement and she got she says I promise you I left and I took every cent out of the account. Amen. God provide supernaturally, miraculously. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. And as he did it for her, he could do it for me. Thank you, sister. He could do it for me. He could do it for me. If you don't want to claim it yourself, it's your business. But he's going to do it for us. Amen. Amen. It's time to give. Can you please come up and give, please? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Saints of God, yesterday I was on my way home. I was preparing to do my tithes and offering. And when I got home, I went to where the money was. And there were two $50 bills in my Chester drawer. And I said, well, let me go and pay my tithes and offering. When I got the envelope, the tithes and the offering was already in there. This morning when I got up, I went to look in my, my wallet. It was a $20 bill, $10 bill. Another two $50 bills. So then I looked to the back of my wallet. There's another $50 bill. Thank you, Lord. I don't know it was there. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. So uh, uh, can we come? Every, has everybody come up? Y'all can come up. We, we just go in the way, the, by, by the, way, the way of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Oh, many people said they gave through, through here. Amen. Glory to God. And for the ones um, um, on, um, on uh, Facebook and, 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 and wherever you're watching from, praise God. It's time. I'm in another room now. I'm in another room. I'm not right here. Amen. It, 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 you may give now. It's on, it's on the screen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone needs an envelope? No one needs an envelope. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Isn't God amazing, somebody? Isn't God amazing? I'm like, why do I keep on seeing a Brinks? A Brinks vehicle. And he said, God said, oh, I'm like, what do I have to do with a Brinks? And he says, okay, it's coming to deliver. Marabadoka. Amen. Glory to God. It's coming. It's coming to deliver. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. Glory to God. But I know that I know that I know that I know that there is a special delivery coming for us. Hey, glory. And it's coming for you too, but you got to claim your own. I can't claim yours. You got to claim your own. Glory to God. There is an unscrupulous job coming for somebody. It is an unscrupulous job didn't make no sense it's ridiculous the amount of money you're gonna get glory to god is going to be unfathomable no 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 glory to god hallelujah hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord glory to god and even if you're in a job a well-paying job god says i got more money for you <laughs> i got more for you Glory to God, because I see that you're about your father's business. Whoa. 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 I see 
that you're about your father's business. I see, my God, that you put the kingdom first. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Bible says, seek the kingdom mm, mm, of God and righteousness. Uh, and all these things will be added unto you. Reba, Sandra, Reba, Haya. Amen. Glory to God. Please, people, whatever you do, be, be kingdom minded. Be kingdom minded. Because if you're kingdom minded, glory to God, God will keep you in mind. Amen. It merely means that you put him first. That's what it means. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Amazing God. Amazing grace. Yes, it is. It is. It is. You know, can we give, y'all know me, can we stand to our feet and give the Lord a hand, my God, for his presence in this church, for his glory in this church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for using that man of God in an awesome, awesome way. I need somebody to give Jesus a hand. I need for somebody to give Jesus a hand. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, I, I want to remind you all that Friday will be here. Amen, live and direct. Amen, Friday, we will be here. We had an amazing time this past Friday. Hello, hello. Talk about unexpected. Talk about unexpected. Oh my goodness. My Lord, he had no particular, you know, I had his word and all that, but then God decided to just do some other stuff. And in this church, we allow God to move. Can I get an amen from somebody? We allow God to move, go to God. And there's some people who have been set free. Amen. 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 And amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads as we close. Father in heaven, King of glory. My, 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 my. It's an old song. How great the word. How great the God, how great thou art. Oh God, how great thou art. How great, how great, how great, how great thou art. Father, we just thank you right now. We just thank you for all that you're doing. We thank you for all that you've done. We even thank you for that amazing teaching this morning at 10 o'clock. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 On the spiritual cleansing class, I thank my God. I thank my God for you even showing up and speaking through your servant and teaching through your servant. Glory to God. Bringing revelation in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we just thank you for all that you have done, will do, and are doing even right now we never take your spirit your presence lightly we give you glory honor and praise in jesus name Please, before we go i want us to pray for josiah uh, his father passed is it friday saturday, saturday morning his dad passed away in new friday morning saturday. yeah that's what i thought saturday morning 2 a.m in new york and uh, this young man has been committed and dedicated in this ministry, yeah. Yeah. helping uh, Sean in that media department, and uh, his father passed. Uh, please, let's just stretch our hands and just pray for him that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard his heart in the mighty name of Jesus, that the Lord will comfort him in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible makes us understand that God is the father of comfort. He's the one that comforts us in our trials and tribulations. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the Lord will comfort Josiah in the name of Jesus and the other family members in the name of Jesus Christ. Even Josiah's mom as well, the Lord will comfort her in the 
name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and will guard your mind in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Receive our condolences. Amen.